this story is one that is really uh, of interest to me on a number of levels, even though I don't particularly care to follow the Trump administration political drama. In fact, I have really deliberately avoided it. I, I think it's, it's not just a shit show and a clusterfuck, but it, in fact, calling it a clusterfuck is almost like unfairly diminishing its effectiveness as political theater because I think that's what most of it is designed to be. I don't think Trump is as incompetent with personnel as he lets on. I think that a lot of what he's doing is deliberate in order to continue to be America's reality television tough talking president. But the nomination and uh, eventual withdrawal for Secretary of Veterans Affairs uh, by uh, Ronnie Jackson does shed light on some very interesting related issues. So from Politico.com, Jackson troubles shine light upon a fact of Washington life, sleeping pills. The White House physician is battling allegations he was overly loose about handing out sleep aids and alertness pills on Air Force One. Ronnie Jackson, the White House physician, who is battling to save his nomination to be the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, regularly handed out the sleep drug Ambien in the alertness drug provigil to West Wing officials traveling on overseas flights. Now, this is just part of the drug war, right? Because the drug war isn't just the drugs that the government makes completely illegal, but in how it regulates so-called legal drugs. Ambien and Provigil are legal drugs, but they are controlled substances in the sense that they are not supposed to be distributed in certain ways. Jackson's nomination has inadvertently exposed the widespread use of sleep and alertness drugs among government officials from the White House and State Department to the Pentagon and Congress itself. Allegations about Jackson's liberal dispensation of Ambien and Provigil come at a time when opioid abuse, some of it enabled by doctors, has ravaged communities across the country, increasing awareness about the dangers of casual pill popping among the public at large. So there's a lot in this story, and I, I don't want to get too much into it, but they're calling him the candy man. He was, you know, just giving away pills to whoever needed them, that they had him in plastic bags. And, and, and this has brought up a lot of stories, not just, I mean, and in, in Washington, it's part of it, in the military especially, there, uh, you know, and, and this is again, just sort of stories that's, that aren't officially confirmed, but there are units where they, when they're doing long flights, where, you know, they get off the plane and they're given uh, Ambien without prescription, just en masse, anybody who wants one can take one. Uh, Provigil, the alertness drug, excuse me, something that, you know, I experimented with, didn't agree with me. And, uh, you know, I had to go to, I think I bought it on the Silk Road, actually. Uh, I, I definitely had to have it bought uh, covertly in, in order to procure that. So it has uh, now, according to the story, according to Politico, Pro Vigil has addiction potential, so caution should be taken in prescribing it because it's a stimulant. Doctors also need to carefully consider whether patients have heart problems or anxiety conditions that could be exacerbated by use of the drug. So now these might be very real concerns. But are any of the side effects of abusing Pro Vigil and Ambien like on some scale worse than those for alcohol or nicotine or, like, or, or even caffeine abuse potentially? Of course they're not categorically different. And the, the answer here is that you have the right to decide what you put in your own body without any forceful interference whatsoever. Simple as that. You want Ambien, you should be able to go to a store and buy Ambien without anybody telling you otherwise, standing in between you. Now, the cool part of the story, though, is that you see this sort of unique phenomenon of political attacks where it's like you're trying to pull someone's pants down in public but somehow they're attached to your pants and when you pull down their pants, your pants come down just a little bit or maybe just as much. In this case, it was the Trump administration nominating Ronnie Jackson, Navy Admiral, doctor, pill popper, candy man, 
and man with lots of rumors swirling around him now pounced upon by Democrats in the U.S. Senate around his nomination to be Secretary of Veterans Affairs. And as a result, the entire culture is exposed. And as a result of that, it's, also, it's kind of like a, a, a multi-connected uh, pantsing effect because government here, I, I mean, I, it's funny, you, it, you can pants government itself. You, you can expose it for its crudeness, lewdness, disgustingness, criminality, whatever the case may be. The problem is it usually doesn't really have much of an effect except for the audience because government has no shame. So pantsing government doesn't do any good except in waking people up and making it that much harder for the racket to continue. So I'm just glad that, as the title of the story says, that by the Democrats trying to pants Ronnie Jackson, they end up pantsing themselves in the sense that they are exposing their willingness to attack on rumors and silly specious grounds rather than just being honestly able to evaluate who's the best person to run the VA, which ends up pantsing the Republicans in the administration for this broader culture, which is, of course, typical to both parties, which is essentially now pantsing Washington as a whole, which is, of course, essentially pants and government. Am I using this metaphor? Am I going too much with this, Elijah? Too many pants? Too many pants. You said the word pants a little Pants. Bit. Too many times. But see, pantsing is also... It's, it's, it's not just a verb here. I mean, it's not just a noun. I'm using it as a verb as well. Yeah, I get it. And so, so technically that... Technically, it's two different words. Technically, it's... Thank you. <laughs> so I've only said pantsing or pants half as many times as you think. You split up that way. But no. Um, as usual, government should and is not very, very embarrassed. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your post and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.